The s is one of the most common consonant sounds that occurs in English. And there are quite a few reasons for this. It is one of the few sounds that can occur in all of these word positions, at the beginning of a word, the middle of a word, the end of a word, and also in a lot of blends. Consonant blends are when two sounds are said to, two consonant sounds are said together without a vowel in between. And we're gonna go through all of these later in the video. They're also used to create a lot of different grammatical structures. For example, you use the s to mark plurals, like books, ducks. You use s to form contractions, such as what's, it's, let's. You use the s to create possessive forms, Jake's house. You also use the s sound to create the third person singular form in the present tense, such as makes, eats, visits. So for all these reasons, the s is ubiquitous. It pops up everywhere in the English language. And therefore, it is really critical that you say the s correctly because it can very quickly get confusing or distracting for the listener. Hello, language lovers and language learners and intellectually curious folks everywhere. My name is Bakul Soman and welcome back to my channel. If you like my video, make sure you take a moment to like, comment and subscribe. In today's lesson, we are going to familiarize ourselves with some common misarticulations of the s sound. Then we're going to learn what the correct placement of our articulators is to get a beautiful, clean, crisp s sound. And then we're going to practice this sound at the syllable level, the word level, and the sentence level. And of course, as I do with all my sound videos, I do have a free PDF for you to download. And as always, I'm going to suggest that you watch the whole video first before you download the PDF and start practicing so that you get the most out of it. All right, let's get started. So I mentioned common misarticulations of the s sound. What are these? Sometimes people use distorted s sounds. And what I mean by that is there are two common types of distortions that we often hear. And I'm sure when I explain it to you, when I demonstrate it to you, you are going to say, oh yeah, I know somebody who uses, you know, one or the other of these distortions. All right, because we've all probably encountered somebody who uses these types of distortions. The first one is called a frontal lisp. And what that means is that the tongue is in a further forward position than is appropriate for a good s sound. So this is what it looks like. This is what it sounds like. Th, 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 thun, thuper. The second type of misarticulation is called a lateral lisp. This is what that sounds like. <sighs> Fun, super. Okay, so it's kind of slushy and mushy. Doesn't have that clean, crisp, hissy sound. The third type of misarticulation is often used by non-native speakers of English. And it is because of the specific phonetic structure and rules of their primary language that they are juxtapositioning onto English. Okay, so two languages that I can think of are Japanese and Korean. Um, speakers of these languages might often use the sh instead of the s, or they may not discriminate between those two sounds. And as I said before, if any of these misarticulations are happening, it will cause confusion and distraction. The frontal and lateral lisp, they are not going to cause intelligibility problems. People will still understand what you're saying, but it will be distracting because the sound happens so frequently and every time it is misarticulated, your mind is drawn to it and it's distracting. And then if you're using a different sound like the sh instead of this, that can get confusing because you could change the meaning of the word completely. Like su versus shu is very different. Okay, so now let's talk about what the s is. It is a voiced sound, so your voice is turned on. It is a fricative, which means there is a constant airflow that is happening. There is no blockage anywhere. The airflow as it's coming up from your lungs is constantly flowing out of your mouth. 
But what you're doing is you're constricting, you're creating constriction, you're shaping that airflow. And where that constriction is happening is at the alveolar ridge, that bumpy portion right above your teeth. That's the alveolar ridge. That's where the constriction is happening. So that's where you're narrowing the passageway um, and the air has to come through that narrow passageway. It is really hard to teach this sound because there's not a lot of visual feedback that you're getting. Okay, so if you look in the mirror, when you make the sound, everything is happening behind a pretty closed mouth. So there's not a lot you can see in terms of what your tongue is doing. So it has to do with really being mindful about what you're feeling inside your mouth. Where are you feeling contact? Where are you feeling tension? Where are you feeling elevation? Okay, and good sound production is all about stabilization and mobilization. And what I mean by that is there are specific parts of your articulators that you're using to stabilize. And because you're using certain parts to stabilize, other parts are able to mobilize. So that is really, really important. So you have to stabilize the correct parts and mobilize the correct parts. Okay. So for the s, what is happening? What are we stabilizing? What are we mobilizing? Okay. So the bulk of your tongue is high toward the roof of your mouth. Okay. The side of your tongue is what you're using to stabilize. And how are you stabilizing using the, the side of your tongue? You have a very light contact between the sides of your tongue and the sides of your teeth. Okay. Remember, this is a fricative. There's no jamming. There's no shoving. It's a very light contact, but it is enough to stabilize your tongue. And that leaves your tongue tip. So your sides are stabilized. Your teeth are lightly holding your tongue in place. And then your tongue tip is able to mobilize toward the alveolar ridge. Okay. Again, it's not jamming into the alveolar ridge. There is a gap there, but there's a tiny little gap. Let's go back to the picture and I'll zoom in to the part where the, al the, where the tongue tip approaches the alveolar ridge. You will see that there's a very tiny gap there. Okay. So that is your constriction. That is you, you shaping the airflow. And you can also imagine your tongue making like a little groove. So the sides of your tongue are stabilized with the teeth, light contact, and the tongue tip is mobilizing, but the, the middle of your tongue is kind of has that, in, imagine an indentation, and the airflow that is coming up from your lungs is going through that indentation over that little constriction you're creating right at your alveolar ridge by pointing your tip up. There's There's a little bit of tension in that tip, but there's that tiny little space for it to squeeze through and make that hissy sound. Imagine that you are using a pea shooter. So you want a very targeted airflow coming out through the front of your mouth. Okay. Remember what I said about the stabilization mobilization with a lateral lisp that is reversed. So people who use a lateral lisp, and this is what it sounds like. What is happening in a lateral lisp is the tongue tip is stabilized and the edges are mobilized and the air is going laterally. Hence, it is called a lateral lisp. So for a good S, the airflow has to come forward straight out of the mouth through the front of the mouth. So for those of you who are using a lateral lisp and you want to adjust how you're saying your sound, try this. Think about the stabilizing, stabilization, mobilization. I think that is going to make a huge difference if you want to change how you say your sound. And here is the reality, okay? I think going through these placement steps is going to take you most of the way to getting a good sound. But like I said, because there isn't a lot of visual feedback, it may take some experimentation. It may take you kind of playing around with your tongue placement and trying to see what gets you that sound. And once you get that sound, then you have to say like, okay, what did I do then? I have to recreate it. You're going to keep working on it until you get it. But those um, articulator placement tips that I gave you in terms of light contact on the sides, the stabilizing portion is the sides of your tongue. The mobilizing portion is the tongue tip. You have a little tension. You're elevating it and you are approaching the alveolar ridge. You're not touching it. You're creating that tiny, narrow little passageway for the air to escape through the front of your mouth. Think of that pea shooter. Think of that groove that is channeling the air up from your lungs through the groove over that tiny little constriction. So all of this is really going to help you, but 
it may take experimentation. So make sure you give yourself that grace and, you know, experiment with it and you will get the correct placement. So we talked a lot, a lot about placement. I probably repeated myself a few times, but like I said, I have been teaching the S for a long time and it can be a very tricky sound. So I just wanted to make sure I gave you a lot to work with. So now what we're going to do is we're going to practice this at the syllable level. So that just means we're going to take this and we're going to blend it with all the different vowel sounds. Okay, so here we go. C, 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 S, 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 now we're going to move to practicing a few words that have this in different word positions. Okay. So listen and then practice with me. I'll say the word three times. Listen the first time and then try to say it the other two times. Sun, 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 sink, 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 soap, soap. Soap, same, same, same. Now let's try a few words where the sound is in the middle. Lesson, lesson, lesson. Whisper, whisper, whisper. Fossil, fossil, fossil. Council, council. Council, classic, classic, classic. And remember, when you're practicing all of these words, make sure you are not messing with the stress pattern of the word, okay? So sometimes this happens when you're trying to focus on the sound, you over-exaggerate that sound and you mess up the rhythm of the word. So make sure you're stressing the right syllable and maintaining the rhythm of the word. Okay, now let's try some words where the s is at the end. House, 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 bus, 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 nice, 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 bliss, bliss, bliss. And finally, let's look at some examples of consonant blends. So there are multiple different consonant sounds that can go together with the s sound to create a consonant blend. So I've tried to pick one word from each of those possible sound combinations. All right, so here we go. Slide, slide, slide. That's the SL blend. Spin, spin, spin. Snow, snow, snow. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Store, store, store. Scarf, scarf, scarf. Skate, skate, skate. Smile, smile, smile. Now it is time to practice the s at the sentence level. I'm going to say a sentence that has the s in a lot of different word positions and multiple times. So take your time. I'm going to say the sentence one time. I'll pause, allow you time to repeat the sentence. I'll say it again, and then you can repeat it with me that second time, okay? The sun is slowly warming the honeysuckle blossoms. The sun is slowly warming the honeysuckle blossoms. Jack's sister softly whispered something in his ear. Jack's sister softly whispered something in his ear. This is a tiny point, but make sure when you say his, that is not the sound, even though it is the letter S, it actually makes the z sound. And the S does do that. It does make a lot of other sounds as well, 
in specific contexts, and I'll talk about that in a different video, but just pay attention to that, okay? So you only want to say that sound where it should be said. Sometimes that becomes z or some other sounds. So pay attention to how I'm saying it and try to match that. The sleepy cats sat on the soft sunlit windowsill. The sleepy cats sat on the soft sunlit windowsill. The sailor sent Jesse a message in a glass case. The sailor sent Jesse a message in a glass case. Sandy puts apple cider in her delicious salad dressing. Sandy puts apple cider in her delicious salad dressing. Now you're ready for the PDF. In it, I have words that have this in all different positions, and then I have a lot of sentences for you to practice as well. If there are instances where the s does not make the s sound, I'm going to highlight those. If, if the s is in a different color, that means it does not say the s sound. It says something else. As always, if you like my videos, make sure you take a moment to like, comment, and subscribe. And thank you for watching. I will see you next time.